Hello and welcome to my swing evolution. If this is your first time coming to my channel, I was basically a frustrated golfer that for decades couldn't even dream of breaking 80. Now I'm working on becoming a scratch golfer because I decided to rebuild my golf swing using Ben Hogan's five fundamentals. So today I'm gonna to give you an abbreviated version of the work that I've done in the way I see the Ben Hogan swing, and hopefully it will help you become a better golfer too. Now if you would like a more detailed analysis, I did write a book that's available at myswingevolution.com, and there's a clinic video that I hosted that's also available on that website. So let's go ahead and get started with the overview of the Ben Hogan golf swing. In Mr. Hogan's book, The Five Modern Fundamentals, the first thing he starts off with is the grip. And I think that's a great place to start because I think a lot of people are plagued by having what's called a long thumb, where the thumb reaches far down the shaft like this it creates an angle like this that encourages a flip of the club face at impact. But what I've learned that I prefer very much is to have a short thumb, which allows the club and the forearm to work more as one single unit. So I'm not as concerned about whether it's twisted on the strong side or the weak side. That takes experimentation uh, to find out what works for you but it is very important to not have the thumb reaching down the shaft, but rather to have it in a line with the forearm. Now the next part of the swing I'm gonna talk about is the takeaway. Now Mr. Hogan always talked about having his upper arms connected to his torso. And you'll see a lot of pros practice with a golf glove underneath one of their armpits because they wanna keep this feeling of connection as the club goes around their body. So what Mr. Hogan would do is start off with a one piece takeaway where everything is in one piece turning away from the ball. Now once the club got to about eight o'clock, Mr. Hogan would have a very early wrist set. He'd start cocking those wrists right away. Now this is a part where a lot of my subscribers have had some trouble because I've talked about the deep takeaway and even Jack Nicklaus said later in his career, swinging deeper rather than just high became very important to him. Deep is the direction behind us. It's a rotation, we're turning all the way around, okay? Now people have a tendency to lose the club back here, but what I use as an image in my mind to help me from getting too deep with the club head, I wanna make a full body turn, but I want this club to go through my right shoulder. That's the feeling that I have, is that I'm gonna shoot this club up right through my right shoulder. Now once we reach the top of the swing, Mr. Hogan would have a cupped left wrist and a full wrist cock. Now it's very important to understand that this is the crossroads in the swing where the lower body is going to move first. Most people make the mistake of using the upper body first. We wanna wait. We wanna let our upper body settle in and then we wanna let our lower body start the downswing. It's gonna start with a slight lateral bump and then the left hip is gonna start to turn out of the way. Now when that left hip starts to turn out of the way, that's gonna be the cue for the right elbow to drop in to the slot. It's what I call the atomic elbow. Now as this right elbow starts to go down, we're going to lose the cup in the wrist. This is what I call the Hogan roll, and it's gonna allow us to square the club face to the ball earlier in the arc. So as the elbow drops, the wrists are gonna roll down like so. Now as we come into impact, there's gonna be a moment right before the wrists unhinge that I refer to as Shangri-La. And you'll see that the club is coming from the inside. The club shaft is aligning with the right forearm. The wrist is beginning to get bowed. And then we're gonna apply all our power as we continue our rotation through the ball.
Now for me, one of the most important things to remember through the impact is to keep the elbows connected to the body. We're gonna hit the ball with our body and not our arms. That's the big, big difference between Ben Hogan and most amateur golfers. Amateurs will wanna throw their arm at the ball, but Mr. Hogan would use his rotation to hit the ball. That's why I refer to it as a body swing. So as we're coming down, this elbow is gonna stay connected and we're gonna trade the right elbow to the left through impact. So this left elbow connection is what's gonna give us this nice long finish that Mr. Hogan was very famous for. So now let's go over the whole thing from the top. Mr. Hogan had a short left thumb that let the club work in conjunction with his forearm. Mr. Hogan had a one piece takeaway to start. He also cocked his wrist very early in the backswing as he swung the club up through his right shoulder to a cupped position at the top of the swing. From the top of the swing, Mr. Hogan would have a slight lateral bump and when he turned his left hip out of the way, the right elbow would drop down into the slot and the cupped wrist would unroll into the bowed position. He would keep his elbows connected through impact and pass the club from the right elbow to the left elbow and keep his rotation turning as hard as possible all the way through impact. So I hope that helps you. I highly encourage you if you're frustrated and you've hit a plateau to think about rebuilding your golf swing. And I don't think we could ever find a better example of the perfect golf swing than Mr. Hogan himself.